Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon to vote for Eraserhead or Uravity from My Hero Academia, and like and subscribe for more mature leaders next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Sailor Mars, probably the most involved of the Sailor Scouts, because hobbies outside of Sailor work are banishing demons and seeing the future. Essentially, it's just the same as working? I get that. My hobbies include writing future episode scripts and researching future episode scripts. There's a reason she's the grumpy one. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need all the fire of Mars, a planet that's actually further from the sun than the Earth. It's okay though, Mercury has water power, so that doesn't make sense either. Next, we need to look into the future, figuring out what's going to happen before it does happen so we can either make it happen or stop it from happening. Finally, we need to send the demons back to hell with magic to get rid of extra dimensional forces. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep your multi-classing minimums in mind. Wisdom will be number one. One, you need to have insight strong enough to see into the future. Charisma next, you aim to be a world-traveling singer in addition to like 40 other careers. Intelligence after that, religion is an intelligence skill. I'd imagine that's important for a shrine maiden. Follow that up with dexterity. These sailor outfits aren't exactly heavy, so you need to be light on your feet. Constitution is a bit low. You tend not to get hit in a lot of fights. There's usually only one or two rounds in a Sailor Moon battle. And we'll dump strength. Jupiter can handle the heavy lifting. You just need to cook things. Humans are great at cooking things, which works out well since you're a human. Elemental Adept for Fire will let you ignore resistances to fire damage and treat ones that you roll on damage die as deuce to make sure that any alien invaders are getting properly roasted. Bump your intelligence and your wisdom with your two free points, take performance for your skill of choice, and the acolyte background for religion and insight proficiency, because you grew up in a temple, that's pretty much what an acolyte is. A lot of acolytes end up being clerics, and that's because if you're working for a god, you might as well get something out of it. How about persuasion and history skills? That could help you persuade people and help you pass your tests, at least more often than your empty-headed leader. Mars is the Roman god of war, so naturally we'll ignore war cleric to become a light cleric instead. Light clerics get warning flare, letting you impose disadvantage on a creature attacking you as a reaction an amount of times per day equal to your wisdom modifier, it can be hard to stare directly into fire if you're not used to it. You get the light cantrip for free, which creates a small light for everyone's dumb human eyes. For your other cantrips, guidance and resistance lets you take advantage of your future sight, giving a creature a d4 for ability checks and saving throws respectively, and spare the dying stops a creature from rolling death saving throws to give a little CPR. For your first level spells, light clerics get burning hands, forcing a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a 15 foot cone, dealing 3d6 fire damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed, to make your hands into a little flamethrower. For the standard cleric spells we want to take, Detect Evil and Good lets you sense aberrations, celestials, elementals, fiends, fey, and undead within 30 feet of you for up to 10 minutes, depending on your concentration. Protection from Evil and Good gives those creatures disadvantage on attack rolls against a person you choose, and they can't charm, possess, or frighten your favorite sailor for 10 minutes. Probably Mercury, she's the lowest liability most of the time. Detect Magic lets you sense magical auras and the type of magic that's causing them. There's a lot of transmutation going on in your line of work. Clerics can pick their spell lists on long rest, so I'm just going to cover the spells I think are Marzi when you hit a level where you learn new spells, and you can grab those and whatever other spells you want at home. Your total amount of prepared spells is your wisdom modifier plus your cleric level. Second level clerics can channel divinity, and for once, turn undead is probably the more in-character option, forcing a wisdom saving throw on undead creatures and making them dash away with their action if they fail. Light clerics also get Radiance of the Dawn, forcing a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 30-foot radius, dealing 2d10 plus your cleric level in radiant damage to those that fail. Light clerics are clerics that get fire, but they also get a lot of radiant. I think you could just call that fire that's extra hot, but you could also just save your channel divinity for turning undead. Nothing wrong with that unless you don't run into any undead, probably try and use it. Third level clerics can learn second level spells. Light clerics get Scorching Ray for free, the perfect burning mandala. This fires three fireballs that deal 2d6 fire damage each with a ranged spell attack. You can hit one creature or multiple, up to you, though there's generally only one villain per episode. Flaming Sphere lets you throw out a five foot radius sphere of fire that forces a dexterity saving throw on creatures that it interacts with, dealing 2d6 fire damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed. It hangs out for a minute and you can move it around 30 feet in any direction you want as a bonus action on following turns to have a little fireball constantly doing work for you. 
For regular cleric spells, augury lets you know how something is going to go in the next half hour. Your DM will say wheel if things are looking good, whoa if things are looking bad, both if it's a mixed bag and neither if it's just nothing. Hopefully they don't say nothing, but if your sailor scouts are as unpredictable as my players, you can't blame them for getting it wrong. Fourth level clerics get an ability score improvement, start investing in wisdom for hotter flames and better banishment. Maybe the Ghostbusters should have brought some flamethrowers with them. Fifth level light clerics can learn fireball, forcing a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a 20 foot radius sphere, dealing a d6 fire damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed. It's really good folks, like the creators of the game were like whoopsie doopsie we made fireball too good. For regular cleric spells, sending lets you send a message to a creature somewhere on the same plane or even on another plane with a 5% failure chance for a nice little sailor watch speaker thing. Remove curse removes a curse from a creature or object, cleansing evil spirits like spirit bleach. You also can destroy undead of challenge rating one half or lower when you use the turn undead feature to get rid of smaller spirits pretty easily. Six level light domain clerics get improved flare, letting you use your warding flares to defend your friends within 30 feet of you instead of yourself. Chibi Usa seems to be the key to like four different apocalypses, maybe keep her safe. Also, she's a baby. That's something worth protecting. You get another channel of divinity per long rest too to keep those spirits at bay. Seventh level clerics can learn fourth level spells. Banishment forces a charisma saving throw on a creature sending them to a harmless demiplane for a minute depending on your concentration. If they're supposed to be from another plane originally, they go back to their home plane instead and stay there if you're able to hold your concentration the whole duration. Now the ghosts don't run, they just go away. That's much better. Divination lets you ask your DM a question about something that happens in the next seven days and they try to give you an honest answer, though it can be a little cryptic. If you use this multiple times, you could get a random bad reading instead, but again, if I'm your DM, I might just not have any idea what y'all are about to do. So it could be random anyway. Eighth level clerics get another ability score improvement so you can cap off your wisdom modifier to get extra spicy when you roast people. Light clerics also get potent cantrip, letting you add your wisdom modifier to the damage of a cleric cantrip. None of yours deal damage but you could also destroy undead of challenge rating one or lower, so you get plenty of other good stuff at this level. Ninth level clerics can learn fifth level spells, like Flame Strike to create a 10 foot radius, 40 foot high cylinder of light that forces dexterity saving throws on creatures inside dealing 4d6 fire and 4d6 radiant damage to those that fail. Personally, I think fireball is better, just upcast it, but if you're fighting someone vulnerable to radiant or resistant to fire, this would be a little bit better. That's free from the light domain for regular cleric spells. Legend lore lets you know about a person, place, or thing of legendary renown. The more you already know about it, the more information you get, maybe get Ami to roll a history check first. Dispel good and evil gives celestials, elementals, fiends, fey, and undead disadvantage on attack rolls against you for a minute, depending on your concentration, though you can end the spell early by removing an effect of charming, frightening, or possession from a creature or banishing a creature entirely. I don't totally know why this is a fifth level spell. It's just protection from evil and good, but it can only target you and doesn't include aberrations. Then you end it by casting banishment or greater restoration to end it early, which are both fourth level spells. This is a bad spell. Don't use this. I still wanted to talk about it, mostly to dunk on it. I just don't get the purpose of it. Seventh level clerics get divine intervention, letting you ask your god for it anything. Roll a d100, and if you get something less than your cleric level, the god intervenes in some way, maybe giving you a new power that looks pretty dang similar to your old powers. If you fail, you can't ask again for the next day, and if you succeed, you can't ask again for a week. Nobody wants to seem needy, you know? 11th level clerics can learn 6th level spells. Find the path lets you know the most direct route to your goal, even if it's not the safest, like a fantasy GPS. True seeing gives a creature true sight in 120 feet so you can see the ghosts that need banishing. Speaking of, you now totally destroy undead of challenge rating 2 or lower for less pain from ghostly ghouls and ghastly ghasts. 12 level clerics get an ability score improvement. Let's start working on your charisma now. You eventually want to be a star, right? 13th level clerics can learn 7th level spells. Plane shift is the best banishment spell since it can kick people out of the plane in one round. First, you make a melee spell attack against a creature, then they have to make a charisma saving throw. Failing that, they go to another plane of your choice. It's their job to get back. You could also use this for a sailor teleport, joining hands with up to 8 friends and going to another plane of your choice. So you can bring Mercury, Venus, Moon, Jupiter, Pluto, Odie, Snoopy, and Mr. Peabody along with you. Firestorm is one of the biggest fire spells in the game. It creates 10, 10 by 10 foot cubes of fire that force dexterity saving throws on creatures inside, dealing 7d10 fire damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed. This is truly planetary levels of fire. When you're done, Earth's going to be the red planet. 14th level clerics can destroy undead of challenge rating 3 or lower, meaning that mummies go bye-bye. 
That would have made the Brendan Fraser movie a lot faster, but then we'd miss out on more Brendan, so it's a good thing they didn't have any clerics. We'll bounce over to Sorcerer now because there's some fire we didn't get. Draconic Bloodline Sorcerers get Draconic Resilience, so you can get one more HP for every level of Sorcerer you get, and your AC is 13 plus your Dexterity modifier when you're not wearing armor. The Sailors take a bit more of a beating than most commoners. For cantrips, Firebolt is a ranged spell attack that deals 3d10 fire damage. It's pretty simple, and you can fire it every round. Ain't that nice. If you'd rather have an AoE, Create Bonfire creates a 5-foot cube of fire that forces a Dexterity saving throw on creatures inside, dealing 3d8 fire damage to those that fail. Dancing Lights creates a bunch of small floating dim lights instead of one big one like light. Control Flames lets you do some small things with fire, make it flicker, change color, that kind of stuff. Getting cantrips late game might seem pretty weak, but it's for roleplay stuff. That's invaluable. For your first level spells, we actually can't get any fire at this level. Too bad. Shield adds 5 to your AC as a reaction to burn up some incoming attacks. Jump triples your jump distance. Your strength is bad, but all the Sailor Scouts still have an anime jump. It'll make your horizontal jump 24 feet and your vertical jump 6 feet. It's not exactly the biggest, just enough to give you a little bit more mobility. Multiclassing spellcasters isn't all that scary. You can prepare an amount of spells you normally would and check page 165 of the player's handbook to figure out how many slots you have at any given level. Second level sorcerers get a font of magic with sorcery points you can use to recover spell slots and you can burn spell slots into sorcery points as well. That will come more into play next level. For now, grab Expeditious Retreat to dash as a bonus action for up to 10 minutes. Depending on your concentration, our stats are going to be all going into casting, so we need spells to get a little more physicality. Third level sorcerers get meta magic, letting you augment the spells you cast by spending sorcery points. Careful spell lets you pick creatures equal to your charisma modifier to automatically succeed your saving throws. It would probably be frowned upon to kill one of your fellow guardians in a blazing inferno. Distance spell doubles the range for a spell for a little flame sniper. For this level spell, Agonizer's Scorcher forces a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a 30 foot line, dealing 3d8 fire damage to those that fail. It's another shape of fiery goodness. Fourth level sorcerers get another ability score improvement, bump your charisma modifier so the these sorcery spells can be effectively used like your cleric spells. Pyrotechnics turns some existing fire into either a smoke bomb that fills a 20 foot radius with smoke, heavily obscuring the area for a minute, or forcing a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 10 foot radius, blinding them for one turn if they fail. I prefer the smoke personally, but live your life. Fifth level sorcerers can learn third level spells. Melf's Minute Meteors creates six floating meteors that you can send down with a bonus action on following turns, dealing 2d6 fire damage to creatures inside that fail a dexterity saving throw, have as much to those that succeed. This is a bit of a slower burn. Get it? Like fire? But it also takes longer to deal the damage. Our capstone is the sixth level of Draconic Soul Sorcerer for Elemental Affinity, letting you add your Charisma modifier to the damage of one fire spell per round. In addition to all of your buffs from Elemental Adept, that should make your fire very dire. You could also spend a key point after you cast a fire spell to give yourself resistance to fire damage. Cooking yourself is generally not recommended. For your final spell, the spell magic lets you shut down spell effects of third level or lower on a creature or higher level spells with a Charisma check of 10 plus the spell's level, letting you clear out any debuffs evil spirits are putting on your teammates. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you're great at handling undead, either knocking them out of the plane entirely or just blowing up the smaller ones instantly. You also have a ton of fire damage and ways to make that fire damage extra consistent. Finally, all of your divination can figure out what your DM has planned, helping you prepare cleric spells as you see fit. For weaknesses, you're really dependent on fire damage and lots of things are straight up immune to it. You also have terrible physical stats since we had to invest in charisma and wisdom, meaning you have low AC and terrible health unless you rolled really, really well. If you just went pure holy solely, you'd get all these spells and be a little bit worse at handling spirits, but that's fine. Thankfully, if you know what's coming, you don't need health. Make a plan, burn up anything threatening the earth, and send the spirits back where they came from. Just don't stay in the fight too long, or your future might not be all that bright. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon to vote for Eraserhead or Uravity from My Hero Academia, and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.